Hi, this is Scott Gathright, intro to speech. And here's my audience for the night. Here is my outline. And here are my citations. All right. Uh, so imagine in spending your entire life uh, in search of others in need of his help or assistance, um, but rarely ever taking any time to take anything for yourself um, and finding satisfaction in that. Uh, today I'll be sharing with you information uh, regarding Clara Barton. I'll first start by discussing her role as an educator, uh, then move on to discussing her efforts in helping identify Civil War soldiers, and finally, I'll finish by sharing her involvement with the American Red Cross. Uh, so let me first begin uh, by telling you uh, about Barton's roles as an educator early on in life. Uh, in order to help improve her drastic uh, shyness, a uh, visiting phrenologist by the name of L.N. Fowler uh, diagnosed her um, with shyness and just suggested to her parents that she begin teaching summer school. Um, in order to bring herself out into the world, you know, break that shyness. Uh, phrenology basically, based on the concept of the bumps and ridges on your head, she would uh, explain your strengths and your weaknesses quickly, you know, discard it as an actual di way to diagnose. But in this case, Fowler couldn't have been more right. Uh, according to an article uh, by C. Bacon Foster in 1989, in controlling others' minds, uh, she acquired self-control, although to the end of her long life, she was timid and sensitive to a degree, unless driven by a strong impulse. She was just a natural-born educator. Uh, her persistence in early education led to opening one of the very first free public schools in New Jersey, uh, which started with only six students on their first day, and ended up at the end of the year with over 200 students. Uh, here we see Clara Barton at the age of only 15, uh, teaching one of her classes. Fun fact, Clara Barton regularly put, pinned her hair up in the Princess Leia hairdo. <laughs> uh, moving on and uh, discussing her efforts in helping with the, uh, in order to identify uh, Civil War casualties. Uh, Clara Barton learned of the mass number of inquiries going, being sent into the War Department um, in regard to where their lost sons were from the war, from both sides. <clears throat> she then went on to uh, inquire to Abraham Lincoln, requesting that she be in charge of helping find these soldiers. Uh, Abraham Lincoln quickly agreed. Uh, so she began her quest in identifying soldiers' remains at numerous battlefields all throughout uh, the U.S. Um, as stated in Harper's article, Miss Barton continued this most trying task, and by her skill in following clues, she located and marked the graves of over 20,000 Union and Confederate soldiers who last, whose last resting place, but for her brave, devoted service, would have forever remained unknown. Uh, the, the new National Cemetery in Andersonville, Georgia, opened in 1865, uh, shown here with Clara actually rising the flag, the very first flag on that cemetery in honor of those troops that she had helped to identify. Finally, we will move uh, and see, uh, start this to discuss her involvement with the American Red Cross. Uh, following her efforts with that min missing soldier's office, uh, Barton was in need of a break. Her, her health started to turn for the worse, so she needed a break from all the intense uh, help that she had been giving all others. Um, finally turning it into herself. So she went across the pond and spent some uh, time with family and friends in Geneva. Now, after learning about the International Red Cross and learning that the U.S. had yet to be one of, uh, was one of the countries that had yet to join, um, she started putting more effort into pleading with the current president um, in order to join. Um, after numerous, uh, numerous attempts, uh, she finally worked with President Garfield and Chester A. Arthur to have the U.S. finally join the convention and created the American Red Cross. 
Uh, here we see the inaugural ceremonies uh, with Clara Barton up, you know, up front and in center. Um, as stated by Jane Stewart, uh, she organized in 1881 the American Red Cross, whose work she later extended to relief in uh, extended to relief in great catastrophes such as floods and famines. So basically, other wor in other words, she was extending their relief not only in wartime efforts but in peacetime as well. Um, so there we have. I've just shared with you several aspects of Clara Barton's life. Uh, starting with information as early as an educator, uh, moving on into uh, her impact with identifying Civil War soldiers, and lastly, I gave you information about her American Red Cross involvement. Uh, Claire Barton's hard work and selfless dedication in helping those that were otherwise could not help themselves have made her an icon in the United States as well as the entire world.